Hello and welcome back to The Stronghold. I'm the Magi and today we are going to be talking about the Mastery Pass. Not just what's in it, but some different ways you can be thinking about those components when making your own Mastery Pass purchase decision. And perhaps more importantly, we're going to be talking about the draft token and the many ways that individuals can be thinking about that. And in part because, well, for more than a year now, I haven't been entirely honest in the way I value the Mastery Pass. And today, I want to take the opportunity to clear that up. But before we get into all that, this season, Dusk Morn is focused on that horror genre and all of those fears that us 1-1 one -one human tokens tend to share. But you know what I really find horrifying? Only one-third of the viewers that regularly watch my content have subscribed to the channel. So come on guys, take a moment, sub to the channel, support the content, and be sure to check your notification settings so you never miss out on a thing. Now, uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, right. With the release of Bloomborough, the Mastery Pass introduced the Emporium concept where there was no more orb tree. Uh, you simply armed orbs and you could redeem those in whatever order you wanted to for a variety of cosmetics. Uh, they have continued with that trend as promised. However, this time around, there is no playable cards being offered, unlike Bloomborough. Um, but there are some very nifty cosmetics in the forms of sleeves and card styles. And yes, there are enough orbs available if you complete the Mastery Pass to redeem for each and every one of these. And if you are on the five orb free to play club, uh, you don't have to select these in a particular order. You can just go for whatever five orbs worth you want most based on your individual likes. All right, so for folks that maybe aren't familiar with the Mastery Pass system, uh, let's talk about some of the fundamentals here. And uh, well, the first thing I, I have to say about this is I, I love the artistic coloration choices that they made with Wilds of Eldraine. And it shows up so well with these uh, bright yet deep purples and uh, the fairy companions or pets or however you want to call that, uh, kudos. Uh, that having been said, let's, let's talk about some of the more hardline aspects. As you can see here, there are in fact two pathways here. The one on the top is freely accessible and automatically done so for everyone who plays Arena during the course of each season. Of course, this one we're talking about, the Wilds of Eldraine season. Uh, the bottom path is uh, often referred to as the Mastery Pass itself, and that is a buy purchase option. It can only be purchased with gems, and the initial cost on that is 3,400 gems. Uh, the actual cost on that can be a little bit more nuanced, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, on the free path side of things, or that top path, uh, you'll hear me refer to it that way as the mastery path, because we all walk that path together, regardless of our economic status within the game. Um, Wizards officially designates it as the set mastery. And typically what you get is about every other level you win a free pack. You'll see that here on uh, level 2, uh, again on level 4, 6, 8, 10. And these will continue all the way up through level 70 this time. But the free pack stops giving rewards this time around level 60. Uh, giving you a total of 30 free packs along the way. Uh, there are a couple of other things going on here. Uh, you will see the occasional Mastery Orb, which is a redeemable for cosmetics. And in the free Mastery Path, that is typically done with five Mastery Orbs about once every 10 levels. 
starting at level 5 and uh, then going all the way up to level 45. For the initial set each year, there are some additional nuances here. If you see uh, level 7 and level 9 here, and then you'll see some others later on, uh, you'll notice there's kind of a green glow to those levels in the top path. And that means you are receiving an additional reward as part of your renewal system. Uh, if you don't see those, it's because you aren't qualified for renewal yet. Don't worry about it. They tend to do this every year. If you didn't get it this year, you will most likely get it next year. Uh, level three would have a similar uh, such pass uh, green to it if uh, I hadn't already redeemed it. Uh, those are just additional rewards like wild cards, or I should not say wild cards, I should say ICRs, uh, uncommons at level 3, uh, a mythic at level 9, etc, etc, etc. Again, if you don't see those, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing to report, uh, you most likely just have not joined recently enough that you did not qualify for renewal. Uh, essentially the cutoff on that was the release of Wilds of Train. So if you have started playing Arena after the release of Wild of Train, you probably will not see that. Now in shifting focus to the lower path, of course you start off with a cosmetics bundle right off the bat. Uh, there are packs, including packs that are not Wilds of Train. Uh, you will also see cosmetics and an additional 25 cosmetic orbs. Uh, those are two separate rewards here. Uh, you will receive one specific cosmetic and then an orb that you can redeem for one of several choices. More on the specifics of that later. Uh, you will also see additional ICRs, all of which are mythic on the paid mastery pass. Uh, you will also see options, well I shouldn't say options, uh, opportunities to receive uh, gems, play sets of rares that are not typically available as part of the base set. These will come from the commander set and uh, things like that. And uh, at level 15 you will typically receive a draft token. This is not redeemable for a quick draft specifically, but one of the premium and traditional drafts, um, you get your choice of either of those. And as you can see, there are more packs here, which are not Wilds Bell Drain. And beyond that, you will also have uh, the opportunities to receive gold refunds, so to speak, and special cosmetics like uh, additional companions or pets. And uh, that is what makes up the pathway here. And that paid pathway continues to receive rewards every single level through level 70 and beyond. Uh, every thousand XP that you receive beyond level 70 will redeem an additional uncommon individual card reward or ICR. Uh, now, in contributing to the value on that, you would have to figure out what all of these individual levels would mean to you. And th there's a lot of different answers on that, and we will go into the specifics here shortly. Uh, the one fundamental thing that I would propose here is that the Mastery Pass itself, purchasing that for the initial cost of 3,400 gems, is the best thing that you can be doing with your gems. And while these are your gems and not my gems, and you're welcome to use them any way that you want, uh, using gems for any other purposes before having purchased the Mastery Pass each season is potentially economically unsound. Uh, that is because of the return on investment that is offered by the Mastery Pass and how high that is in the spectrum of all of the choices that you could be making on Arena. And we will go into more specifics on that in a few minutes. Uh, for now, let's talk about some of the ways that you can value these various levels and rewards along the path. 
Now, as we move into valuation of the different components of the mastery pass that we just talked about, I do want to take just a moment and acknowledge the fact that people play this game differently. I don't expect you to be a mirror image of me or my play style or the economics that are factored by those play styles. Uh, if you have your own perspective on how to value these things and it makes sense to you, by all means, use that. My goal here is not to get you to think exactly the way I do or convince you that I'm right, but to get you to think about the economics of the game from your own unique perspective. Now, when it comes to cosmetics, I am not shy at all about saying that, well, I don't see a lot of value in cosmetics. Uh, as far as I know, I have never won a game because of cosmetics. I don't spend resources on cosmetics. I don't recommend that you spend resources on cosmetics. But if you feel differently, you might find a wide range of valuations on various cosmetics. I, however, do not spend any resources on cosmetics, and as such, I do not put any value to them when evaluating the Mastery Pass. After cosmetics, by far the most numerous thing you're going to find in the Mastery Pass are packs from various sets. And really how you value these is going to have a big determination because of the frequency on uh, what you see as the total Mastery Pass value. And uh, really, you could make an argument for some people that are strictly free to play that packs really don't have any value because they don't actually buy them. Um, personally, I dismiss that. I, I think that's a little uh, too far one side there as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I do think there is some validity for people that bulk out their collection through Quick Draft. And there you get a per pack value of about 150 gems. Uh, of course, the store sells packs uh, for 200 gems pretty much every set every day of the week. And occasionally we see discounted packs anywhere from 170 to 180 gems. Uh, so depending upon where you are in this spectrum uh, is going to have a big influence on your total mastery pass value. Now for myself and what I recommend through the plan, the number of packs purchased, etc. Uh, I am currently using about 180 gems as my pack value. And once you've established a value for packs, whatever the case may be, uh, you probably want to use that same valuation for the levels that offer you 1,000 gold, because 1,000 gold to a pack is a pretty good analog and is probably going to continue to reflect the way you play the game and engage with the economy. All right, so let's take a few minutes and talk about those draft tokens. Because for years I have been telling you I value these at 750 gems for the simple reason that they replace a quick draft for me. Because the reality is I'm never going to pay to do one premium draft versus paying the same amount to do two quick drafts. I'm in it for individual cards. Doing two drafts gets me twice as many cards. It's just that simple. But the reality of how I think about these is a little bit more complex. Because you see, I only get two of these draft tokens a season. I never pay for a premium draft. I only ever do them when I use draft tokens. I get one, of course, from the Mastery Pass, like we're talking about today. And then about once per season, they do a daily deal offering it for 9,000 gold, which is the way I pay for it, or the equivalent amount of gems, 1,350, that keeps the 25% gem discount viable for this style of draft token. Now, as we've discussed, once you purchase the Mastery Pass, you get a whole lot of stuff with it. Uh, but in my mind, the gold and gems really just reduce the reoccurring cost of the Mastery Pass. And once you eliminate that, you are left with what in my mind really breaks down to two broad categories, your cosmetics and your game playable pieces. 
And I'm not shy about telling you, cosmetics don't mean a thing to me. So once we eliminate those, that leaves us with what I see as the real meat and potatoes of the Mastery Pass. And I'm gonna tell you, I buy the Mastery Pass to get the packs and the card ICR rewards. The event token is really kind of secondary because like I said earlier, if I didn't have it, I would just do more quick drafts. So to me, the event token in the Mastery Pass really is kind of a sunk cost and really to me is worth zero gems. I just wouldn't do it. Uh, but the fact of the matter is premier drafts make better content. And that means a better experience for you, the audience. And really, that's the only reason I mess around with the draft tokens at all. So if we look at both pieces of this equation, from my perspective, the pass tokens are zero gems, really. And the deal token is usually 1,350 gems. That gives us an average value of 675 gems per token. That, of course, is the way I'm looking at it. Each one of these tokens is worth about 675 gems worth of content value for me as a content creator. But is that the way you should value the draft token? Well, honestly, probably not. Uh, you probably are not a content creator focused on budget content. But then again, the point of this video is not to tell you how much every single component is worth and whether you should buy it or not. The point is to get you thinking about these different pieces, how they might affect you as a player, and make a decision about its value based on your own circumstance and needs. And with that having been said, let's talk about some of the slightly less controversial valuations within the Mastery Pass. By far, however, the swingiest evaluation that you will see regarding the Mastery Pass is with the play sets of designated rares and the individual mythic card rewards. Uh, one of the more top-end versions of this that I have seen people use is uh, converting the uh, wild card purchase options from cash into gems, uh, but so doing means you get more than the mastery pass value back with just the mythic uh, ICRs. And I think this is kind of invalid because an ICR and a wild card and a specific rare are not necessarily equal in value because of course an ICR just gives you a random mythic. A mythic wild card can be redeemed for exactly the mythic that you want. So again, this is one of those areas you can do what you want. It, whatever makes sense to you is what you should be valuing at. But for me, I don't think these models really work. For me, in order to be very conservative, I go to the other end of the spectrum. Um, I value a Mythic ICR at 40 gems because that is the amount that Wizards is willing to give me in an instance where I get a fifth copy of a Mythic. Uh, similarly, I value rares at 20 gems each, so four rares a playset is 80 gems in my book. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that or see other factors, and I welcome them to do so. And just as broad is the way that you can add gems to your economy. Uh, everything from buying gem packages from the store at various levels and conversion rates, the occasional daily deal, uh, which could be 100 free gems or a 400 gem conversion from gold, depending upon how you look at it. I always recommend converting gold to gems anytime that you can. Uh, the Adventurer Bundle or New Player Bundle offers another opportunity. And frankly, I uh, recommend and support people engage with these various opportunities according to their own budget and comfort level. 
That having been said, the one method that I can recommend really for anybody is farming their gems. Uh, my particular preferred method is doing so through uh, quick drafts that we mentioned earlier. And I know some people don't feel like they're good at drafting or maybe haven't developed a taste for it yet. But the way you get better at drafting is by drafting. And the ability to afford something like the Mastery Pass by really just averaging between two and three wins uh, is very, very approachable. Even if you aren't there yet, give it a little bit of time. It might take you more than one season to buy the Mastery Pass the first time, but you will get there. Your skill set will improve. You will probably start to enjoy drafting once you start being, well, frankly, better at it. Uh, so definitely look into various farming techniques. It's something I talk about here on the channel quite a bit. And I do firmly believe it is not only the most approachable approachable, but overall the best way to free to play your way into the Mastery Pass. Now, once you have established your own personal values for this, you can use whatever methodology you want to simply add up the various items that you receive in the Mastery Pass, and that will allow you to get not only a total value, but also the break-even point where you pass that 3,400 gem value. Um, this usually occurs somewhere in the 30s to high 30s, depending upon the total size and how much they front load the value versus how much they back load. Um, the interesting thing about the Mastery Pass and the reason I so highly recommend it is because when you add everything up, uh, even using the most conservative values that we've talked about in this video, you get a 186% return on value. And uh, that is pretty remarkable and difficult to find in the somewhat challenging arena economy. And of course, the total value only goes up from there. If you see more value in one or more of these aspects, as I said, that 186% return on investment is based on the most conservative, reasonable level, uh, eliminating some of the zero cases that we mentioned. Um, that makes Mastery Pass one of the most profitable things you can do in Arena. Uh, jump in can give you a 200% uh, on average return on investment. Sometimes it's a little higher, sometimes it's a little lower, depending upon the choices that you make and how many times you've done jump in. Uh, Golden Packs is also one of the really high tier return on investments. Uh, buying packs from the current set that also awards you Golden Packs gets you about 160% return on investment. And as you can see, the Mastery Pass just kind of falls right in the middle there, making it a fantastic value. And the primary reason that I say the Mastery Pass purchase every season is the best and first thing you should be doing with your gems. And before we go, while every member of this community is important to me, I just wanted to take a moment and give a shout out to those patrons providing financial support and keeping the stronghold from being a complete financial black hole. And of course, let me leave you with some suggestions for your next step here on the channel.